Uh, welcome everyone to our God's Word Fellowship podcast. I'm Vanita Santiago here again. God is good all the time. God is good and His mercy endures forever. Our God is good and His faithfulness endures forever. I'm so glad to be here with another message on the series which we are calling Knowing Your Heavenly Father. And I appreciate that you are taking time to listen to this message. Knowing about your Heavenly Father, it's a great, great advantage for you, for every child of God. Because you should know your Heavenly Father, who is. Because the world will give uh, wrong understanding and uh, different ideas about God, which Bible does not say at all. Sometimes uh, the world is uh, really crazy what they think about God and uh, what they ascribe to God. If someone uh, dies in an accident, they say God caused that accident. If someone uh, died in sickness or some disease, they say maybe it's the mysterious will of God that he has to die in the sickness. If someone is living in poverty and uh, suffering uh, to meet the daily needs and not able to meet the needs, they say, maybe it is God's will that this person should uh, live in poverty and learn some lesson by suffering like this. This is the way the world speak about God. They attribute all the things which is happening wrong which is happening, uh, the death of the people and uh, sickness and diseases. They attribute everything. It's because of God. All the bad things are happening in the world is somehow the mysterious will of God. We don't know what God thinks, but he still makes it. He is the maker of heaven and earth. He is playing with human beings. That's what people speak about God. We are studying about our Heavenly Father. So you should have a good understanding, proper understanding about your Heavenly Father. Even some of the Christians think that it is the will of God uh, somebody died early. Where in the Bible you will read about this kind of stuff? You would have heard uh, some religious people speak about this stuff about God. That uh, God killed that person. And God uh, sent the tsunami and uh, wiped out people in that area where thousands of people died. And God uh, caused that volcano to erupt and killed million, you know, thousands of people. And God caused that flood and uh, God wanted to teach people. He, people should know that he is God in heaven by causing flood and tsunami and stuff like that. All kind of... Uh, Things, no, people speak about God. They say, God caused it to happen. God is doing all that stuff. See, Bible says, God is good and his mercy endures forever. God is good and his faithfulness endures forever. The good God who gave his only begotten son for human beings to redeem mankind. And he gave his only begotten son so that no one should perish. So that everyone will enter into that eternal life. Will not do the stuff what people are saying. So you know you should know about your God. Uh, you, you protect your minds when you hear things like this about God. If somebody says that uh, God caused this to happen and bad things to happen. Refuse to believe it. Refuse to accept that one. Because our God gives life to people. Our God will do good for people. Our God is deliverer, not a destroyer. You should know about your heavenly father. So our God is good and his mercy endures forever. Today we will continue to uh, meditate about our heavenly father. Before that, let's release our faith and ask God to speak to all of us today through this message. So let's pray and release our faith. Father, we come into your presence in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we know that you are good and your mercy endures forever. Our soul knows very well 
that you are right you are perfect you are wise god you are all powerful god and you are almighty god who is mindful of us to bless us and to do good things in our life and you want to display your almighty power in our life to do good for us father i pray for everyone in the listening of my voice father i pray that you give people good understanding a right understanding about you father father i pray that you help all your children that they read your word every day and understand who god is and what god will do for them father i pray that you give the body of christ a right perspective a right understanding about you father father i pray that you speak to all of us today father i pray that let your word minister what you want to speak to all of us today father lord i pray that you speak to each and every one of them father i pray that you strengthen them pray that you comfort them lord i pray that you deliver them from all sort of troubles which your children are going through father your hand can reach everyone your hand can touch everyone your hand can deliver everyone who is in trouble father we thank you so much for helping all your children even as we are going to study and meditate on your word father i pray that you speak to all of us today in the name of our lord jesus christ i pray amen we'll read our text from genesis first genesis chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth like i said before if you believe this verse that god created the heaven and the earth you will not contradict uh, anything in the bible you will believe every verse in the bible when you acknowledge god as uh, the creator of the heaven and earth and if you read uh, further down in the book of genesis it also says god made man in his own image and likeness so god made this heaven and earth god uh, created human beings in his image and likeness and uh, god is the creator he is the supreme being an intelligent being who created all these things in his perfect wisdom and in his power you should understand this this is very important for your life god's wisdom and god's power these two things are vital vital aspects of our god almighty this is the thing that you should uh, uh, meditate and uh, contemplate and uh, think about it who god is and uh, we'll read the scripture today let's go to psalm 115 verse 12 the lord has been mindful of us he will bless us he will bless the house of israel he will bless the house of aaron he will bless them that fear the lord both small and great the lord shall increase you more and more you and your children you are blessed of the lord which made heaven and earth can you see again here that verse is repeated this verse is repeated many times in the bible it doesn't mean that god doesn't have anything else to speak he is putting emphasis on this that you are blessed of the lord who made heaven and earth the god who made this heaven and earth in his wisdom and power with whom nothing is impossible with whom uh, nothing that you can say that god cannot do you are blessed by him whenever you see your problem people magnify their problem above god people magnify their challenges above the word of god that's when the problems will look very big very great in their sight not for god in our mind sometimes we magnify our problems we magnify our uh, debt we magnify the sickness so much more than we acknowledge and consider and magnify god 
Here it says the Lord has been mindful of us. This God who made heaven and earth is mindful of us. It is speaking about every individual, every born again believer and also God is even mindful of even unbelievers also. If they call on the name of God and uh, uh, repent from their sins and believe in Jesus, God is mindful of them to even bless them. You are in the mind of God. At this point of time, God is thinking about you. And God is considering you. And God has you in his mind. Sometimes when we have uh, very difficult situations, uh, when problems are ongoing and uh, uh, persisting for longer period of time, we think that uh, God has forgotten us. Is God uh, with us or not? That's what uh, Gideon was saying when they were uh, being persecuted by Midians. Midians were uh, oppressing them. So they were not leaving any sustenance for the children of Israel. So they were greatly impoverished uh, when Moabites were ruling over them. So they didn't have uh, proper food and their fields were destroyed, their crops were destroyed. Uh, this problem went on, I think, uh, almost eight years. Consistently, problems were continuing. So Gideon thought that, uh, is God with us? If God is with us, why all these things are happening in our life? So he is uh, questioning the angel of God. He is uh, thinking that God is not with us. God is not thinking of delivering us. Where are those miracles which our father said? He is speaking about the uh, things that what God did in Egypt, how he delivered the children of Israel from the bondage of Egypt, how he delivered them. So God uh, did for them. God did for our fathers. Now he is not doing for us. We are suffering. These Midianites are uh, afflicting us. We are greatly impoverished by what they are doing to us. Uh, we don't have food to eat and I am uh, hiding some of the stuff from them. If they see anything, they will take away from us. So he is explaining all these things to angel. If God is with us, why these things are happening? So he is thinking that in his mind, God has uh, forsaken them, God has forgotten them, and God does not consider their problems, and God does not think about them. That's what Gideon is thinking. But God has sent his angel to deliver the children of Israel from the hand of Midianites. God did this time and again. When people were suffering, God is sending deliverer. God is sending uh, judges and God is raising up kings to help his children. So God has not forgotten you even today. Never say that uh, uh, God doesn't do anything about my problem. God is individually, personally interested in you to solve your problems. He wants to uses almighty power he wants to stretch out his good hand upon you to bless you again what is god mindful of us he is mindful to bless us what does god think about you at this point of time even though you are going through problem and the situations are hard and the things are rough on the outside nothing is promising you're uh, tending to lose hope. Where am I going to receive my help from? The good God, the heavenly father, he is mindful of you. He is mindful of what? To bless you, whoever you are. Whether you are a Jew, whether you are a, a Gentile, or whether you are a born again believer today you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior God is on your side to bless you to increase you and to multiply you do you know what is the will of God in your life not to suffer in your problems not to be living with the ongoing conditions of uh, poverty, debt and lack God's will 
and god's mind is to bless you and to increase you in the next verse we see in verse 14 the lord shall increase you more and more you and your children so this is the mind of god and this is the will of god he wants to do in your life he wants to do mighty things for you he wants to astonish you and surprise you with his blessings again blessings not something bad will happen a righteous man who is born again should not expect bad things in your life should not expect evil to happen in your life you are the child of the most high god you are under the protection of god almighty and god's good hand is upon you to bless you and to protect you and to give you a great life and to give you a great future and to deliver you from all your troubles for that you need to exercise your faith that's all in uh, psalm 115 verse 9 it says o israel trust thou in the lord he is their help and their shield verse 10 o house of aaron trust in the lord he is their help and their shield and again this is to you you that fear the lord do you fear god have you accepted jesus christ as your personal lord and savior then he is your help and he is your shield and lord is mindful of you to bless you but there is one condition that is not too hard what god is asking you to do trust in the lord oh israel trust in the lord oh human beings trust in the lord oh the children of the most high god trust in him you can be the children of god and uh, not exercising your trust and your faith in god that's when uh, even christians are suffering sometimes people think uh, you know uh, christians uh, uh, have to suffer for in order to be a christian if you are a born again believer you have to go through this uh, suffering you have to go through this lack you have to go through this uh, poverty situations who said like that the sufferings of christians is not uh, what people say like uh, poverty debt and lack and sickness that's not the sufferings of christian sometimes people say if you have to suffer as a christian you have to suffer for money and you have to suffer in your sickness no that is not the suffering of christian that's a totally uh, wrong concept when people preach do not accept that you know what is the suffering of christian you have to stay committed to trust in god people will reproach you uh, people will insult you uh, people will mock you that you are trusting in god people will make fun of you and sometimes people will persecute you that you are trusting in god those kinds of sufferings are the uh, sufferings of christian uh, not having enough money not having money to pay your bills that's not the sufferings of christian bible speaks about even you need money you trust god almighty you need to come out of your debt trust in your god almighty you need to overcome the sickness and disease trust in god almighty you need to be protected he is your shield and your buckler and david understood this uh, Uh, about heavenly father who he is and what he will do david faced uh, m- multiple challenges in his life and he had a marvelous opportunity in the natural uh, to be given into the hands of saul and died long time before but you know david believed in the protecting hand of god almighty david believed in the deliverance of god he says to god i know that you will deliver me i know that you will not deliver me into the will of my enemies god who did with david was the god of david he is our god today what god did for david he will do for us he is no respecter of persons but david had this uh, 
uh, astounding faith and trust in God Almighty. He always considered uh, God. He always considered what God will do for me. That's the thing that we have to follow about our uh, father David. Let me take you to one verse in the Bible. Go with me to Psalm 8. Here uh, David is speaking about the heavens and the work of God's hand. And he is considering them. Let me read uh, Psalm 8 verse 3 onwards. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Wow, it is ordained. God has set things in order. God has kept the system in uh, heavenly bodies, the solar system. And the work of God's hand is uh, magnificent. When you look at the sun, it's uh, magnificent. When you look at the stretch of the sky, it's unlimited. And how this uh, heavenly bodies function in order and in class and the way they move together. And there is uh, things that God has set there uh, which uh, the planets are uh, rotating around the sun. And some planets are moving in good speed. Uh, some planets are slow. Again, God has kept the distance between the planets so that they don't collide with each other. And God has kept a distance. And there is an order. And they move in order. And so David is considering the work of God's hand. David didn't have a deep understanding about this uh, uh, gravity and the ether which is functioning in heavenly body, the force which is keeping them together. So David uh, did not have any <laughs> the detailed uh, uh, things about the heavenly bodies and all that stuff. But he is uh, seeing uh, the magnitude, the mega structure of the sky, the mega structure of this heavenly bodies, the work of God's hand, the way he created the trees, the way he created the human beings and the bees and the anatomy and the biological structure. And one man is producing man, a beast is producing beast according to its kind. Monkey is not giving birth to dog. Man is not giving birth to any different kind of being. So there is an order. There is a system which God has kept. And this God who made this heaven and earth with wisdom and power. In his perfect wisdom he has uh, made them. So that they are even being sustained today. And they are even continuing today. Without any malfunction. And without any disastrous things taking place in heavenly bodies. So David is considering the work of God's hand. And then he is telling in verse 4. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of God that you visit him. Actually this uh, thought considering the work of God and the uh, moon and the stars and all this is the thought of an angels in the old testament when god uh, made heaven and earth and uh, he restored uh, earth back again and uh, he kept the human being and he made adam in his image and in his own likeness and he gave earth into the hands of humans and the uh, angel Angels are astonished at this. Lord, you are such great God. And you made this heaven and earth which is so vast and so big and it's mega structures. And uh, you are so great and you are so wonderful. You are uh, awesome in your wisdom, awesome in your power. And this great God... You are mindful of man. So in, in front of this uh, heavenly bodies, the sun and the moon and stars and the earth, man is very small in terms of stature. 
So man's size is small. And you know, God is mindful of man. You know, you are more precious to God than a heavenly body, sun, moon, and stars, and more than this earth. You are more precious to God. When uh, angels are seeing uh, that God made Adam and he is uh, visiting him every day. It, this is uh, before the fall of Adam, before he committed uh, that sin. So God is coming to Garden of Eden and daily having a conversation and chat with his son. How are you Adam? I you're doing well? Is everything okay? You need anything else? Let me give you. Actually God had given everything. I I'm just uh, speaking about the conversation and God is taking time to come down from heaven to visit man who is so small in stature and uh, who is not that wise, who is not that strong and God is mindful of him and he is visiting him every day. He wants to talk to him and he loves him so much. So angels are astonished at the love of God that he has for human beings. And God gave this entire earth into the hands of Adam. This earth is in a place, uh, by actually the scientists say, it is in the sweetest spot. If earth is placed anywhere else and not in the spot where it is today, it would have been disastrous for earth. So this earth is protected by God. Human beings are protected by God. And God designed earth in such a way so that man can live without any effort, without any uh, pushing hard to live. So God made man's life so easy. And he is visiting Adam every day. So you consider this uh, heaven, the work of God's hand, and you look at one human being which looks big for you you know this uh, sky this heaven that looks big in the natural but this great God he is coming to meet Adam and again if you take this in the New Testament and this great God who made this heaven and earth he is dwelling on the inside of you so you are the temple of the Holy Spirit God loves you so much and he made his permanent abode in you. He is mindful of you. People may forsake us and people may forget us. But God, he will never leave you nor forsake you. He is permanently abiding in you. He won't forget you even for a second. If God forgets you, that's what the devil will play over you. Devil will play with you like a toy. Uh, he is not a merciful fellow and he will afflict as much as he can. He will destroy as much as he can. He comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. But our God is dwelling on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit is dwelling on the inside of you to help you and to comfort you and to strengthen you and to give you hope. Christ in you the hope of glory, not the hope of defeat. Sometimes when we consider our problems, if you are taking time to consider and contemplate and meditate on your problem, you know what will happen? You will start believing in the problems to get worse and worse and your mind will go in different direction, uh, like opposite direction, uh, which is not good. Because devil will put in your minds, oh, this situation is going to get worse. God will not help you. You know where you will end up? You will end up coming on the road. You will end up having a lot of debts. That's the fear he will put in you. He will make you think that God will not help you in your troublesome situation. Why the Holy Spirit is uh, dwelling on the inside of you uh, just to stay there dormant and do nothing about your problems? We need to consider God. He made this heaven and earth and this God is interested in solving your personal problems. 
Sometimes people think, okay, God is interested in big stuff, maybe in nation or maybe in politics or uh, maybe with the people in superpower or maybe pastors. Sometimes uh, uh, believers as individuals, we think uh, God will not do much for us. We are not uh, super spiritual Christians. Uh, we don't read the uh, Bible so much and uh, God doesn't think about us. You spend time with God. Uh, you read your Bible every day. That's very important. That is not the thing that we should neglect. But God is not doing uh, those things for uh, other people uh, just because they are super spiritual. See, in the Old Testament, we read about uh, Leah, uh, Jacob's wife. Uh, it says that uh, she was uh, tender-eyed, not so beautiful. But her sister, Rachel, was uh, very beautiful. And uh, Jake, uh, La Laban, he will uh, cheat his uh, son-in-law and he will give Leah first uh, wife. He will give Leah's first wife to uh, Jacob. And the uh, Bible says, Leah was hated and Rachel was loved. You know, God actually takes time to write all these things so that we will think that God is interested even in the personal problems. This is a, one sister is being loved by her husband. Another sister is being hated by her husband. Uh, two sisters became one man's wife. So one girl is loved and another girl is hated. You know what God does? Since Leah was hated, Leah was not loved by people. Leah is not uh, this good looking and uh, charming girl. And she is a tender eyed. People hated her. We don't know what caused people to hate her. Bible says that she was hated. You know, God opened the womb of Leah. God made her fruitful. So God remembered her. God considered her. It is a family problem. It is a sister problem. But God is involving in that. God remembered Leah and he opened her womb. You know, for Rachel, she was being loved by people. Uh, she was praised by people that she was so beautiful and all that stuff. Maybe she was lifted up and so proud to begin with. Later she will humble and she will change. But uh, at this point of time, she was loved by people. Uh, she was the favorite girl and good looking and all that stuff. But she was barren, Bible says. And uh, she couldn't bear. So, see, God is even interested in every individual problems. If it is family problem, God will involve. If it is a debt problem for a, in, in an individual person, God is involved and he will solve your problems. Whether it is a strife problem in the family, God will come and teach you how to fix that problem. Not everyone is having a, a financial problem. Not everyone is having a, you know, health issues. We will have different issues. Some people are uh, uh, being left by wife and they are all alone and they are yawning that they should be joined with the his wife and children, they want to come together. There are many prayer requests uh, come to us. Uh, pray that my wife will come back to me. Pray that our family uh, come together again. We live like before. So there are people who have money, but wife is not with them. Children are not with them. And you know, God will hear those prayers and bring husband and wife together. God is interested in, in uniting in fam unite uh, family together and bring them together and solve uh, whether it is strife problems or relationship problems. And some people are uh, waiting on God, uh, see that uh, their children get married. Some people are struggling to give their children in their marriage. Some people don't have money and some people are not finding the uh, right partner. And some people are not ready for marriage. Different, different problems. Some people are uh, trying to fix the problem in the natural, seeking uh, human's help. See, there is nothing wrong in asking people to pray and seeking human's help. But first and foremost, consider God. Do not consider uh, your uh, problem and make it so big and uh, trying to solve it in the natural. 
first see god concerning your problem as god to teach you no matter uh, where you are in your spiritual level some people have this difficulty in hearing from god i don't have experience of this uh, listening to the voice of the holy spirit i don't know how to pick it up i'm not that spiritual and all see when you trust god god will teach you in a way where you can understand god will teach you at the level where you are this is a something that we should not miss god will listen to super spiritual people who have experience of this praying for many decades and many years and i am this uh, a new creature uh, born again uh, maybe a few months i don't know how to hear from god and uh, that's what people say see when you ask god to help you in your situation when you present your request to god almighty he will teach you in such a way that he, you will receive your help and you will receive your answer and you will receive the direction from god almighty at the level where you are at the level where you can understand god knows how to get that uh, answer to you he, he has a variety of ways uh, to reach to reach you and to make you understand so god understands uh, every person and every human being god knows about uh, people's spiritual level where they are some people are not uh, that great uh, grown in spiritually some people are growing some people are babies uh, some people are spiritually uh, strong and god will deal with you and god will help you in the level where you are in the way that where you can understand this is our god almighty he is not uh, dealing with us uh, mm, with his uh, super power and his super wisdom he will give you a simple wisdom where you can understand because god's wisdom is so high god's power is so big so he is he is not dealing with us according to his power and his wisdom where he is so when he has to teach us he will teach us according to our level according to where we are where we can understand so you can present your request to god almighty and he understands everything about you he knows about your weaknesses he knows about your strength and he will help you so get closer to god and he will come closer to you james says come near to god and god will come near you so you present your request to god do not hesitate and do not doubt whether will god hear my prayer or not his ears are open to hear the cry of a righteous man god is not looking for this uh, perfectionism he knows that you are not perfect he knows that i am not perfect he is not expecting that uh, perfection but he is expecting our heart towards him he is expecting that we will put him first and we will seek him with all our heart in the place where we are and he will listen to our prayers and he will answer our prayers even we give things in the hands of god he knows how to solve he knows how to fix he knows uh, whom he should uh, fix and what he should fix and how he should fix so trust god almighty and uh, he is mindful of you to bless you to increase you and to multiply you so this is the will of god and this is the heart of god pray that god's will and god's desire be done in your life so you will do well we'll see next week thank you so much for listening to this message god bless you jesus christ is coming soon